Sani ni kiocha jamii. Yeah. So we're a reflection of what's happening around us. So if someone sees my painting, uh, they'll know what is happening in Kenya. Or if you see an artwork from a different person in Africa or in any part of the world, you'll know what's happening in their place or where he's coming from. An artist is a okay, it's a problem solver and also an artist documents the history of the society so future generations can always uh, refer to their work to see what was to, to feel the pulse of the society at the time the artist was doing that work or during the course of their existence. Being an artist is one of the most loneliest careers, you know one can actually get themselves into because you're locked in your studio. A lot of times they're working in the thick of the night when the entire world is asleep, you know? And sometimes they are spending weeks, maybe months, you know, on even just one piece, layering it and, uh, you know, and filling it with very, very deep emotions that, you know, cannot be expressed, you know, with words, yeah. So all those emotions then have been, um, given a visual um, voice, a visual context uh, for us not only to look at and uh, be pleased by it, but indeed to absorb or, or, and to try to imagine all the layers of emotions. An, an art dealer is uh, it's kind of like uh, an agent who facilitates uh, selling or transactions between the artists and the people who consume artworks. So, um, yeah, he's kind of like just the, the person who helps facilitate or build a bridge or uh, helps the transactions. Um, go through. A digital marketer has lots of roles but the main aim for a digital marketer is to help you build your brand and achieve your brand goals or business goals. Um, we help you find customers, um, build connection with your audience um, and also in terms of scope of work it could include content creation, coming up with your strategy um, and just helping you see the value of what digital marketing is. An art lawyer is um, someone who's um, um, a bridge, um, I can say, um, in, within the transactions in the art market. Um, and he does so through providing um, legal services. So, so and, and these legal services are to ensure that the transactions in the art market run smoothly. A gallery is a, a space that offers the access to art. Um, right now, we cannot define that a gallery the way we used to define them the way we used to define it before it used to be defined as a place with walls that can be a, that offers access to the visual art scene to the pub offers visual arts into the public but that's not it anymore right now for example i just said we are an online platform but we operate as a gallery Quite by accident, a friend of mine who worked for a newspaper company in here in Nairobi about 11 years ago asked me if I'd be interested in writing feature stories for the, for the newspaper. So I said, sure, I'll give it a try. I don't have a background in journalism or writing literature. And that's how I started writing on different topics, just whatever interested me or what they were looking for. 
got into the arts about maybe five, six years ago, started writing about the arts because I realized there weren't too many people writing on that topic and there was a gap for it. So covering events, exhibitions, different artists and completely self-taught in the area. I, I don't have any, I think they call it formal training, is it? I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, what I have is the real, like, on the ground kind of training. I got into the arts, the visual arts scene out of necessity. I remember I was home, didn't have much work. I am into filmmaking myself. I still do film, but that particular time I didn't have anything to do. I was just stuck at home and my cousin asked me to help out. In the university, we have what we call university common units. And in those ones, they have a, a unit called entrepreneurship, where they are taught how to relate, how to sell out, whatever. But art business is different. Entrepreneurship should be taught specifically to students. Because that way, then, it's, it's a different uh, market. It's not Skuma Week you're going to sell. It is art you're selling, and you know the logistics behind selling art is bigger than just selling an item. It's not supply and demand. It's way bigger than that. It's a whole cost. So uh, that is one of the areas we, we hope to introduce entrepreneurship as well as curating because it's not been actively involved in the academia. An artist may, may, may wonder or may, may be mad at, at galleries or may think that galleries are ridiculous in taking the commissions that they take. So you're like, these guys are taking 40%. They're not even taking 40%, they're taking 56%. Uh, but m maybe one of the challenges is the not understanding uh, the realities of how things function. So if, uh, and this is not just for the art, this is for, for normal business. So if, if you have sales of more than uh, 5 million, the government requires you to, to, to be registered under VAT, under value added tax. So value added tax is a tax that's slapped onto everything that is sold like goods and services. When you're buying milk at a supermarket, it has VAT. When you're buying a lot of these things. So it's, it's the price that the, that the seller is, uh, is, is pushing plus 16% on top. So the gallery, that, I mean, if you think that they're taking 56%, that 16% is not really theirs. It's something that they take to push forward to the government directly. Artists are constantly selling themselves to curators, you know, for as they're seeking um, exhibitions, you know. They're constantly selling themselves. So uh, the only difference is that perhaps or differentiation that they want to create for themselves. And really it's an illusion that they're not direct selling, you know, say to the collector, you know. Yeah, but they are constantly, you know, selling themselves to curators and gallerists. You know, and we know that, and we know the challenges um, that they're constantly facing, and the pressures, you know, that they're constantly applying as well, you know, on uh, on galleries uh, for shows. I know that some artists really struggle being online because of, I guess, how they connect social media or digital marketing. To them, it might be very intrusive, or it's just some more work that they don't really want to have to do. African artists still don't have the grasp. of what it is to make their craft a business. The ones that have a grasp is the ones who have ended up managing their lives. Uh, I think uh, they, just, they should just work on the relationships with the artists because what, what we have most of the time is very, very transactional relationships, you know, like, uh, give you the painting, I sell it, I give you the money, you're gone, you're hot for a while, we drop you, you get another, the next hot thing, and it's a cycle like that, and uh, you're, you're depressed, we don't care. 
uh, yeah, we need we need to make money. It's a business, and that kind of re uh, relationship with, which is a very, I think, a prevalent thing in with galleries and institutions. I'm signed by a gallery. Its name is Aka, and. The way they approached me was good for me as an artist because they, we, um, I don't know how to put it, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's a challenging thing at first because you have to go through the papers and everything, you have to do a lot of paperwork and you have to like think as an individual how that how the gallery will benefit benefit you yeah uh, my my clients are mostly from social media the social media platforms uh ig ig is doing a uh, ig f for me is like amazing um and you're able to like connect with all these people who are interested in you know owning some of your uh, your pieces I mean, even if the gallerists are doing their best and, and, and trying to crunch as much as they can, um, they can nev I mean, the galleries are definitely not, not enough for the artists that exist. So, um, and, and you know, like that they're all working very hard to, to, to enable the arts in or to develop the arts in. Uh, but also the, 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 the three different galleries that I'm talking about also have different uh, tastes and preferences. And, and so th there's, there's so much more need for more. And, 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 uh, and there's, there's yet enough to, I mean, they, um, I, I don't know why there are not more dealers or there are not more galleries. I, I still don't understand because because there there are valuable works of art. There are really great artists. Yes, indeed, they are navigating the art market. Um, they are, that's full of very many transactions, and also you know now including the digital environment that has also made it easier or not so easy for for visual artists. So. Um, how do you navigate that? And one of the options is through getting, um, you know, you are, you are represented as an artist by a gallery. And then the gallery is able to sort that out for you. And then the other option is actually to do all that by yourself. Um, doing that by yourself is not as easy, but you know, there is that, um, I think I would imagine some beauty with independence. Um, but then you have to deal with all of these art market professionals at each and every stage of, of what you're doing. Um, but um, what is actually important is to actually set up yourself as an institution um, if you're an artist. Um, do you have a studio? Is your studio registered? Um, do you operate as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entity? So that if you're an entity, then you're able to contract with all of these um, bodies you know, as an entity. And you know that entity can also get assistants or employees to assist you um, in undertaking all of these activities. Um, and these assistants that would be in your studio, then for instance, would be assisting you in legal work. You can get a, a, a lawyer who can be assisting with that. You can get a photographer. So that now you can get someone who's doing digital work for you. So that now when you're putting, going there to the market, then at least you've handled most of the basic work um, if you're doing it independently. Um, but what is important is to set up yourself as an institution because you are a professional and what you're dealing with is um, something that is valuable to you. Yeah. Generally speaking, there are, there are many, many contracts actually, um, many contracts, uh, starting from the premises, the studio, um, where an artist is creating work. You know, that would be a tenancy um, contract. Um, if, it's a, if it's not, if it's a studio that um, an artist has rented, if it's um, their own premises, then there would be a different arrangement. Um, over from there, you go to, you know, that's the studio space. Then from there, when the, the artwork um, and the artist moves from the studio 
to the market. Um, you know, there are also contracts there. And one of the contracts would be, um, is, it, is the artist um, represented by, by a gallery? So there would be an artist representation contract. Um, up and above that, there would be, if the artist is not represented, then there would be um, a gallery or um, an art market professional who would want to um, represent the, the artworks themselves, um, not the, so that would be an artwork uh, representation contract, and a contract then that only, uh, that for representing the artworks that have been created by the artist. So those are three, and then you'd have, um, if it's in a, a gallery that does not represent an artist, and then you've gone out there to exhibit your work, um, you'd have um, a consignment contract where an artist is consigning the, the contracts, the artworks to, to a gallery. Um, and then over and above that, I, I think eventually um, there would be all of those contracts where the, the, uh, the gallery would be entering contracts with, with the artist. Um, in terms of payment, um, in terms of insurance of their work, display of the work, um, and then over and above that, I think inside there, I think within those categories, then there would be several variances because if it's um, the work is being exhibited locally, then the contract would take a different format. If it's been exhibited in galleries outside um, um, the country where the artist is located, then the contract would take a different format. Yeah, so I would say those are the um, most important. And then over and above those four, then would have, if the artist is not, the gallery does not have a curator, the artist might also want to have a curator. So they would have um, an agreement with a curator. So there would be those, generally speaking, those um, agreements. Yeah.